Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to What If Naruto Lost His Humanity, the movie. If you did enjoy this movie, make sure you comment down below what else you want to see. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss another daily upload. Hit the like button because it helps a lot more than you even realise. And check out my thumbnail artist in the description. Um, pretty sure that's it. Also, check, join, follow me on Instagram. Add me on Snapchat, we'll have a little conversation. And other than that, guys... Um, let's just get you straight into this movie. Enjoy it. Peace. We start on a cold, dark night. The nine tails fox is attacking a leaf village. But thankfully before that happened, before the full Fukage had to lose his life, a young boy with blonde hair was born with the biggest smile, the brightest smile in the world you would ever see. But to save his village, his father decided to seal nine tails fox inside and unknowing to him, it meant that his son would be seen as a demon for his entire life. We now cut to about roughly four years later to uh, Naruto who has been hated by the villagers his entire life. Every single day he has to run through the streets as he gets chased by tens if not hundreds of people going to beat the shit out of him. Every single week, a weird man named Danzo would kidnap well, not every like every so often, at least ten times a year. A man named Danzo would kidnap him and test all sort of experiments on him due to Naruto's insane healing fact and him being a Jinjuriki. But he was always released without seeing his face, but Naruto heard the name Danzo once. Due to this that amazing bright smile this boy's had has slowly faded over the years. Well now time skipped to one Naruto is roughly about 10 and in these past few years, and sorry guys, in the past few years, Naruto's only friend had been his pet dog. So now the dog's going to be named Denki. If you guys think of a better name, feel free to let me know down below. But he found him when he was just a pup in the forest and he's raised him since and that was his best friend. Whoa. But one day, the villagers, well, a few, a group of them, I'd say about five, were really drunk and they saw Naruto walking Denki to his house. And they started chasing, they started chasing both of them. Naruto picked up Denki and began running. And they, he managed to get onto the, into the forest of death, but eventually one of them chucked the kunai and it impelled Naruto's back. Naruto dropped to the ground screaming in agony and the villagers appeared in front of him. Denki ran out into the corner and they began beating Naruto. And one of them pulled out a kunai and went to stab him, but Denki jumped in the way just in time, but he was the one who ended up getting stabbed. Naruto's seen this, a felt a rage he's never felt before. But before he could even explode, another villager pulled out his kunai and started stabbing Naruto relentlessly to about the 20th stab room when Naruto's lifeless body was laying there. The only thought was, why? All I ever tried to do to these villagers is be nice, be kind. Yes, I pull a prank here and there. But have I really ever done anything to deserve this? To be called a demon by my own friends? I didn't have a friend since growing up. In his own mind, on onto Naruto, Kurama has been watching this. And his only thought was, this poor boy. All this hatred by his own kind. Treating him like he's a demon, all because he, I was still inside him. Little do they know, their Hokage did it to save them. This boy is their saviour. I actually feel pity. This is the first human I feel pity for. I guess it wouldn't hurt to save him just this once. Before Kuruma can even do this, it all all the surroundings around him turn black. Wait, no! The kid's dying! And Naruto is now dead. We go to Naruto, who's walking in this empty black world. He's walking, his eyes are dull. He's overwhelmed by pure hatred. His, he somehow had an unnatural urge, an unnatural power to see the best in all things, but that has been burnt out. Now all the hatred that he should have felt has been hundred, multiplied by millions if not trillions of times. He basically has infinite hatred. And he's walking. That's when a woman with white hair appears in front of him. White hair, red eyes. And she goes, oh, what a poor young man. Fighting off his hatred to that, and what a poor young boy fighting off his hatred to the end of his days just to be cured by the people he actually wanted to fit in with. Naruto looks up and sees her. This scowl that he gives at the pure 
desk there. It actually scares her a bit. And she goes, young boy, how would you like to make a deal? I'm Miss Officer. I, I am bees above. I forgot Miss Officer. I, I forgot how to say the name. I'm the king of all demons. Make a deal with me. I'll give you second life and the power to get revenge. Naruto just looks at him blankly and says, no. The only one. I know Denki's from Banker Hero Academia. Get on with it. You can change. You can go and down below what you want. He says, I do want Denki to live. She smiles and says, What well, if I give you the power to not only get revenge, but also, also to, hmm, re resurrect Denki? Hearing this, Naruto looks up and before even hearing the terms, says, Deal. Be used above the demon uh, and. Millions of trillions of demons appear behind her. They all began challenging power to create a deal with Deku. The deal was that they would take his soul for power, but Deku would only live for five years. I mean, Deku would only live till he was 18. Oh! I mean, Naruto! Naruto would only live till he was roughly about 18. But something strange happens. Demons' power work on hatred. All of their own hatred for humanity is what powers them. But... Naruto's pure hatred for everything overpowered theirs and as the deal was being made the demons began getting sucked into sa inside Naruto's body. His pure hatred was so overwhelmingly powerful that they were being subdued, destroyed and absorbed. This happened to every single last one of them till Beezlebub was the only one standing. With her energy being drained one by one she says, Kid, you're one terrifying devil. One sec, guys. In case you're wondering, it's a bit of strawberry water this time. Deku ends up absorbing. Um, <clears throat> Naruto ends up absorbing Bees above as well. And as he absorbs his final last demon, his hair turns black, his eyes turn a blood red. And as all the villagers were walking away laughing, a pentagram appears around Naruto as his body rises. As his body rises. All the wounds that he had before heal. Naruto body gains clear muscle. He ends up growing a few centimetres and he stands up with his eyes glowing blood red. The only thing he can think is kill, kill, kill. He goes, hello, in a very dark demonic voice. The villagers get stared, no the shinobi get stared and turn around and see Naruto and they go, the brat survived, I guess we get to have a bit more fun. They, one of them pull out a kunai, and that's when it happens. They stop moving. They fall to the ground, dead. Naruto is holding his spine in one of his hands. In a matter of a millisecond, Naruto appeared behind him and ripped out his spine. He looks down at this spine, and it begins to change, as Naruto is imbuing this dark power that he now has into it. It becomes sort of like a sword, a black bone sword. And he smirks. To all, he goes to all the other four over there and cuts them into little pieces instantly and he walks over to Denki even though Naruto has a straight cold dark face like he's showing no emotion a tear still falls down his face he leans down and he puts his hand over Denki a pentagram appears beneath it and Denki's resurrected but his form changes he's not a dog now he seems to be a wolf but bigger than average stronger more powerful terrifying to everyone but Naruto after this happens, Denki somehow disappears inside Naruto and he says, Oh, better safe than sorry. If you guys are wondering, no, Naruto didn't make a deal with the devil. He absorbed everything possible that was their power. He he completely erased his humanity for this new power, this new sort of Deku. One second, guys. I've got a really heavy-footed sister. Sorry, she's really heavy-footed and she stops around the house. I don't know if you could hear it. But, yes. Naruto with his sword now sheathed, putting it sheath. I mean, he begins walking slowly towards the village with only hatred driving him. He's gonna get the best sort of revenge. If you're wondering, what happened to the third Okage? Why didn't he protect Naruto? The third Okage also hated Naruto, as he had a hatred for Minato. The third Okage didn't want to give up his title, but Minato was elected without even the third Okage stepping down due to Minato's superiority over him. And due to this hatred towards Minato, even though it was kept hidden, the third Okage thought was just a, this was their best chance. He was the one who leaked the information about Naruto being the Naruto's Jinjuriki. He was the one who gave Danzo permission to do all the experiments onto him. 
He told his Anbu that if they saw people hurting Naruto, to join in. And as such, Naruto's life was a living hell. But he was about to make this living hell with everyone else's reality. He finally gets into the village. And he sees some villagers who are always taking the mick out of him. They go, hey, ain't that the demon, bro? He died his hair thing, we won't recognise him, let's get him. One of them begins running towards him, but Naruto rushes at him instead and pierces his hand through his chest. The villagers watch this in horror as blood spread over everywhere. Naruto rips his heart and holds it in his hand and begins eating it. And he begins laughing, saying, So, you're one of you scared now, but not when she was beaten on a child. How about this child beats on you? Huh, <laughs> sus. Naruto runs around this village, killing hundreds of people, everyone who wronged him. Of course, he isn't going to hurt the people who did nothing against him. They just get to survive. The Okage hears about Naruto going rampage and he thought it's about time I can kill that brat. He sends his armbow after him and he gets reports literally 10 seconds later the entire armboot corpse has been killed. Hearing this, the third Okage's heart drops. It's, it's just a 10 year old boy. The Ninetales must be escaping. Let's go. He rushes towards Naruto and he just sees Naruto's new look. The pure presence of death that erades from Naruto actually scares the third Okage. He dives towards Naruto, but and he lunges his hand ready to grab him. At the speed of light, Naruto breaks multiple arrows of the third Okage's arm and moves to the side. The third Okage lands and starts screaming as his arm is literally bent in all ways. Naruto grabs his mouth and says, "Shh!" Grabs onto the third Okage's tongue and rips it out. The third Okage is holding his cheeks, trying to stop the bleeding, and Naruto boots him in the face, saying, "I'll save you for later." He continues around the village to eventually there's only like a hundred people left alive. Those people being the ones who the ones who didn't wrong him, Sasuke's alive. We're all terrified. Him and Sa Naruto are actually friends. To an extent, as Naruto Sasuke didn't know about the hatred and the abuse that Naruto got as it was kept hidden from the children. But he did understand that Naruto didn't live an easy life. And finally Naruto's last destination. Sakura's house, he knocks on the door. Sakura opens it and says, Oh, it was you, you demon. Naruto laughs and says, with a big smile, a creepy smile on his face, saying, Demon, let me show you what that really is. He sends his foot flying forwards, booting Sakura in the chest and then a flying into her house. He's holding on her chest, there's literally a foot mark in her, like it's dented in her chest. He's broken a lot of her ribs. She's in tears, she's, she's thrown up from sheer pain. Her parents rush out and see the Naruto and says, You demon, Brad, they touch my door. One of them whips, her father whips out a sword and his mother who's holding on to her, her brother lays him in his cot and rushes at Naruto with a kunai. Her father rushes towards Naruto just for Naruto to lean backwards and boo his leg, snapping his knee and then grabbing him by the collar and making sure Sakura is watching. He slits his throat with his own with Naruto's claws. And... The blood sprays over everyone, including Sakura's little brother. His pink hair gets dyed pink and red due to the actual his own father's blood. And he rips out Sakura's mother's intestine and wraps it around Sakura's neck and begins choking her. Saying, who's a demon now? All them years of you spreading rumours, beating on me thinking I, I was weak, I was worthless. It's time for you to know the true pain of being, of what being known Actually, no, it's time for you to know the true pain of what apparently being a demon is. He tightens these intestines around Chakra's neck till he can see visible bruising and purple marks all around the neck and he lets her go. And he gets in her face saying, The next time I see you, you're dead. I'm going to let you live the rest of your life knowing that this is all your fault. If you just had to hold your tongue, not abuse someone since they was five years old. Your parents would still be alive, and your brother would still be alive. He goes over to Sakura's brother, who, you guys, what should I name him? I want to say Haruko. Hmm, actually no, I'm going to name him Haru. You know, I'm, that's not going to be me, but it's going to be a little hint to what a future, what if I want to do. He walks over to Sakura's brother. And he picks, her, picks him up by his throat. He, he was about to start strangling him, but when he looked into the baby's eyes, he 
he saw something, something clicked within him. He couldn't bring himself to kill this baby. And instead, he puts him in a cr- cr- uh, cradle in position. <sighs> and he falls asleep almost instantly, like he feels safe with Naruto. And he looks at Sakura and saying, your brother is now mine. And keep in mind, it is all your fault. Naruto disappears in a flash and appears in the Chuha compound. By the way, Sakura's parents, Sakura's parents, oh my head! Sorry, I actually do feel ill. Sasuke's parents would have been killed by now, so Naruto didn't kill them. He appears to where Sasuke was about to go to bed. He, Naruto scares him and he goes, Naruto, is that you? You changed your hair and you, cha- you changed your eyes. Wait, you're not Naruto. Sasuke pulls out a kunai and he says, Naruto says to him, Sasuke, you don't recognise your true dearest friend? After hearing Naruto's voice, Sasuke, Sasuke actually recognises him. And he says, what happened to you? Naruto explains what he's done and Sasuke begins to throw up. Naruto, how could you? Those were our friends. Naruto gets pissed and he actually boots Sasuke in the stomach. Our friends? No, they were your friends, even though you treated them like a piece of shit. Every single day, I'll get beat into a pulp by people our age. And then, people who are grown with their sad lives, so sad that they had to take it out on a little boy, would beat on me. As a matter of fact, an hour ago, I was murdered. Being me being alive today is a miracle. Actually, no, being a miracle would be thanking him. Not to look to the sky. Me being alive today was a disaster. Naruto makes eye contact with Sasuke and uses one of his new powers. He replaces Naruto's entire life into Sasuke's mind. Sasuke sees the horrendous life that Naruto's lived, the abuse, the torture, and he f- at first was disgusted, but then he understands Naruto. He says, Naruto, I'm, I'm sorry, please don't leave. But Naruto says, if I don't leave now, I will destroy this village. But it's your home, it's the only reason I kept it alive. I'm going to leave and I'm going to make my own path in this world. And one day, when I know you'll make the right choice to leave this village, I'm going to blow it to smithereens. Naruto then leaves the village with Sakura's little brother and goes on his own journey. We're going to time skip to when Naruto was 13. Throughout these three years, Naruto's learned about his abilities. And if you were wondering, Naruto's eyes only get serious. Have you ever watched Tokyo Ghoul? It's like that, but without the but without his eyes getting all the red lines, it just goes black with the red, but normally it's white. He also gets like the, I forgot what they're called, he gets the tentacles on his back like the Kagane, that's it. But he has nine of them for like the nine toes signifying it. He can use them. He can also use chakra chains that are black. And this doesn't absorb chakra, it just absorbs someone's soul. There's more abilities that he has, but we'll get onto them later. Naruto is now 13. He's walking down a path and he gets stopped by bandits. They go, Oi, young boy, give us all your money, all your possessions. I'm not let you live with any of your abusers. Naruto laughs and says, you'll let me live. How about you piss off in the next five seconds and I'll let you keep all your limbs. And this the band is like laughing at all together, saying this young brat thinks he's strong, thinks he's powerful. Let's give him a life lesson. They all rush at Naruto and Naruto moves out the way of one of them. One of them swings his blade down and it hits Naruto's shoulder, just shattering. This scares him and Naruto grabs him by a esophagus and he rips it out. One's dead. Naruto summons up his black bone, his black bone blade, which now has flames on it, and he w- he sw- and he shut up, and he swings it. This decapitate, decapitates two of the other bandits, and the final one is left. Naruto summons up Denki, and he eats him. And the final final bandit. Naruto sums up his nine tails, not the fox. When I say nine tails, I mean like his nine kagane. Can you shut up? Sorry guys, everyone knows this is the time I record, but they still message me. Anyway, when I say nine tails, I mean he's like kagane. But he's not going to be a kagane because this ain't Turkey, I go get that shit out of here. He summons up his kagane and he points out this bandit. He begins begging for his life and Naruto goes, 
Why should I spare your life and you weren't going to spare mine? And he impels the bandit's heart. We now go to Naruto who has just freshly killed these five bandits. And with Harry at his side who is now six years old. I bet you're wondering, what? He's six but it's barely even been. Naruto summoned up his dark, dark powers. He's been experimenting with them a lot. Call him Orochimaru 2.0. And he sort of grasped the concept of time. So he placed Harry under time to the point he's not even six, he's roughly about eight. But the way he fused Naruto due to the amazing Genjutsu. Naruto was honest, he called his parents, but due to Naruto slightly influencing him, Harry looks at Naruto as a big brother, a father figure, a god figure, anything possible. And as such, it's just cool. Naruto is someone he can confide in, someone who he can put his whole life to protect because he does feel that way about Harry. But anyway, all of a sudden while they're walking laughing, he feels the presence of someone that is going to be a pain in the ass to fuck with, at least for Harry, and he says, Harry, hide! They both jump in opposite directions into the trees. We see someone that Naruto recognises from the bingo book, the legendary swordsman Zabuza. But someone he doesn't recognise, a masked boy, or looking at the features, a masked girl. Naruto is watching him very closely and he thinks, hmm, if I kill Zabuza, that would be able to let me live a life, at least comfortably, f f for the rest of our lives, including Harry. He pours out his killing intent on the Zabuza, alerting him no Naruto is there. And he grabs onto his blade and says, come out whoever you are. Naruto jumps out and Haku, I mean, Zabuza begins to laugh, saying, ah, ah, I thought it was going to be that copy ninja Kakashi again, coming to get revenge for his pupil. Here in this, Naruto gets his pe interest peed and he says, what pupil? Zabuza says, some Uchiha, bro. He got lucky, he managed to survive, but Haku did a number on him. I wouldn't be surprised if he wouldn't even be able to see a walk again. Here in this, Naruto's blood boils. Sasuke was the one person that he wanted the village to protect. He says, how, when, and why? Zabasa says, oh, it was my little assistant here, Haku. When, I'd say roughly about two years ago. And why? Because he was on a mission trying to kill the bridge builder and they got in the way. Haku, Haku has a little smirk on his face. But before anyone can react, Naruto appears in front of him and decks him hard in the stomach, sending him flying down the path. Sabasa screams, wow, you bastard, and he swings his blade. Naruto just looks at it, and he moves out the way to the side. He then throws a punch, but Sabasa attempts to block with the blade, but Naruto's pure, pure strength breaks through the blade, breaking it in half, and punches Sabasa hard in the chest. He then whistles as Haku is then flying back towards him, but Naruto, I mean, Harry intercepts it in the Haku, and they begin fighting. Naruto draws out his blade and says, You're gonna pay, that was why my one and only friend. Here in this officer begins laughing, saying, If it was your one and only friend, why didn't you protect him? Naruto's bloodlust reaches a point it hasn't reached in a long time. His Kagane pours out, scaring Zabaza. It points at Zabaza and he launches at him. Zabaza begins dodging it one by one, but the speed picks up and it wraps around his leg, crashing it and slamming him into the ground. Naruto appears above Zabuza and stumps in his face and he begins laughing like a maniac. You can literally see the blood in Naruto's vein bulging. This demonic energy flowing, flowing through Naruto's blood is uh, pouring out. Naruto's fangs begin to protrude. His claws grow and this next punch doesn't only break Zabuza's nose, it breaks the ground beneath him. Naruto looks up as he smells blood. His heart stops, it feels like. He sees Senborn pierce into Harry. But at the same time, he also sees that the one who threw the Senborn is missing the arm. He gets pissed off that Harry's been hurt. And he looks at Zabuza, Zabuza and says, Stay here. He places a seal in him, locking him into the ground. He dives at speeds no one can keep up with. And Roundhouse kicks Haku hard in the face, breaking his neck. Seeing Haku's lifeless body just dropped to the floor. Sabuza begins to get an overwhelmed with emotion. And it's somewhat weird. This pure emotion begins to be able to break the seal, 
But Naruto just laughs and says, you think a bit of sadness is enough to come over my hatred? Naruto focuses a bit more, and the seal tightens. Sabasa begins to scream as the seal begins to snap his bones. Naruto walks over to him and places his hand on his face. And he extracts up as his soul. Naruto then decides he needs to make it seem more realistic and he ends up cutting Sabuza and Haku's head off and goes to the bounty. He puts on his mask and so does Harry and he claims the bounty. For us, it would be about 100 million. Like for you, I'd say 150 million dollars. For UK, 120 million pounds. That's how much money Naruto got for Sabuza. And with Haku, it was 20 million. So add it all together, yeah. So Naruto and Harry were living a comfortable life for quite a while. They got Naruto bought them all new clothes, so Harry didn't need to wear these weird shabby things that rob people off their clothes. He began giving Harry an allowance, and when they visited villages, he could get stuff that he wanted. He wanted to give Harry the life that he never got, and that's what they did. Roughly about six months go past, and. Naruto is walking a trail near the leaf village and that's when he senses it He senses Sasuke in trouble He, he, he can hear Sasuke's voice screaming in agony He tells Harry and Harry to stay there and he rushes into the forest of death Naruto after seeing all the other shinobi gathered that this is probably the tune in his arm And when he finally shows up on time he sees that Sasuke has been bitten a weird snake man, no that's Orochimaru, Naruto learnt from the bingo book. And before Orochimaru could actually snap Sasuke up and run back to his base, and Naruto lands in front of him, blowing him back. Sakura goes, hey, who are you? You must be Ambu, please save us. Naruto backhands Sakura and they're flying, and he knees down next to Sasuke. He places his finger on the curse mark and he overrides it. Instead of it being that three Tomoe thing, it becomes a pentagram. This is the best he could do. He couldn't remove it right now, but at least he could place it on his own. He then stands up and looks at Rochimaru dead in the eye. You, you did this. Rochimaru begins to laugh, saying, who are you? You're no sh leave village Hambu. You're probably just a weak. As he says this, he looks down. His hands are missing. They've been cut off, but it Naruto didn't even move from the spot. That's when Orochimaru focuses more. Very thin chakra chakra strings or chakra lines have been placed everywhere. And they were sharp enough and pure enough to cut Orochimaru to shreds. Orochimaru attempts to run away until Naruto's black chains wrap around him. He says, the way is this? A mutation of the Uzumaki clan chains? Like, this is draining more than just my chakra. I can feel my lifespan going with it. Naruto summons out Denki. If you're wondering right now, Denki has nine. Not, nah, Denki don't have nine tails. But he's a massive wolf that has red lightning that shoots around him with three eyes. And he is powerful. He, he begins to go next to Naruto and he laps, he wraps around him. Naruto enters his beast form when he merges with Denki, synchronizing his powers even more. This is the first time ever that Orochimaru has felt fear like this. The feeling of death walking towards him step by step. And Naruto begins to growl. He lunges at Orochimaru attempting to rip his head off. But that's when a leaf village Ambu gets in his way. The flip to Naruto's hand. And he's, the Ambu says, identify yourself. You're no leaf village shinobi. Who are you? Naruto just says, piss off you twat. I'm trying to do an easy job for you and just ending me executing your most wanted enemy. <sighs> for fuck's sake, I'm gonna have to kill you, you know. Now because what? Until Naruto pierces his hand through his chest and saying, I don't like people who get in my way. But I know Sakura had woken up and she saw the bloodshed. And she begins to rush towards Naruto with Kuno. Naruto turns around with a smile on his face. Finally, the promise he made years ago to kill this bitch. Before Naruto to get decapitate her, Harry comes in from the side and boots are hard in her chest. Naruto goes, <laughs> I mean, he's, he, he doesn't have a nickname for him yet, he just says, H, I told you to stay there, he says, why would I ever stay there? Harry looks at Sakura and he feels something, 
wait, it's, who is that? I feel something going on. Naruto says, oh, just take off your mask. Harry listened to him, and Sakura seeing Harry's face says, wait, wait, uh, Haruno? I know that's her last name, but I'm gonna say that's what they're gonna name her brother. And he goes, no, my name's Harry. She looks at Naruto and realizes, wait, Naruto, you demon. I trained all these years to get payback on you. You're wondering, Sakura did train relentlessly to the point where she's halfway to where she'd been chipper than now with her strength. She amps up her chakra and Naruto looks at it and says, hmm, impressive, you're not as useless as I thought you'd be. She rushes at Naruto and throws a punch. Naruto throws one back, overpowering Sakura's force and they're flying backwards. Sakura goes, Haruno, help me, I'm your sister. Hearing this, Harry goes, what? Naruto goes, she's not lying. And he looks Harry in the eyes and puts him in a genjutsu, showing them all the stuff that he had to deal with. And he, and he goes, oh, well, they did that to you, big brother Naruto. I don't give a fuck who you are to me. You didn't raise me. You didn't make sure I had food in my stomach, clothes in my back. Naruto could have murdered my whole family tree and I'd still look at him as a big brother. Here and the sucker begins to break down and Naruto just laughs. He clicks his fingers and a pit, three pentagrams appear on the floor. And demon dries up from them. One of them, the, de the demon of nightmares. The other the demon of torture. And the other the demon of regret. The demon of nightmares puts Sakura in this insanely powerful genjutsu. Where she lives out watching her parents die millions of times. The demon of torture makes her... And this makes her body go through insane torture and heals it repeatedly every single time. And the demon of regret amplifies every single f negative feeling she's ever had. Sarakula's left bruised, battered, laying on a tree, tears flooding out of her eyes, but she has no emotion in her face. Naruto laughs and says, oh, looks like my drop here is duh. He looks at Sasuke, and the pentagram mark has this weird energy spreading throughout Sasuke's body. He picks him up, and him and Haru rush away. They manage to get to a cave, and Naruto begins extracting Orochimaru's soul, his little bit of himself, and he finally rips it all out. And, ah, uh, I forgot, I'm just going to say Orochimaru got away. And, as he gets it out, Sasuke managed to wake up, but Naruto didn't have his mask on, and he goes, N Naruto, is, is that you? You came back. I always knew you would come back. Sasuke then passed out. Naruto felt really bad, but Naruto had a special ability. He could see someone's battle power, their strengths, the hearsay, by looking at them. And for some reason, Sasuke's power was skyrocketing. Was it because Naruto had gave him some of his power? Probably. Is Naruto interested to see where it goes? 100%. Is Naruto going to wait around and see? Maybe. Sasuke wakes up and Naruto is using a camouflage jutsu. Sasuke begins to break down crying. <laughs> Naruto, you're my only friend. Please come back. I don't even care about getting a Dachi. Just come back. This emotion triggers Sasuke's new curse mark and it spreads throughout his body. Sasuke begins screaming. He drops to the ground. Naruto thinks about stepping in, but no. He has to go through this process. Sasuke begins to grow horns. Become, become more devilish. And finally... The devil's wings spread out of his back. Sasuke looks around and he says, N Naruto, that, that's you. Naruto releases the camouflage, he's saying, you can see me? And he goes, of course I can see you, you're my best friend. They both smile at each other and they begin to catch up. Sasuke asks about this power and Naruto says, I don't even know myself. He just said that, I, he I heard your screams and I sensed your chakra get in distress, so I had to help you. And Sasuke just smirks, saying, I always knew you'd have my back if I needed it. Naruto gets up preparing to leave, and he tells Sasuke that he should probably head back to the village. Sasuke says, no, I'm not leaving, I'm going with you this time. No matter how much Naruto attempted to argue with him, Sasuke wouldn't listen, and Naruto isn't going to swing on his own best friend. So he says, fine, you can come with me, but if you begin to be a bird, and I'm leaving you in the dust. And he says, yeah, fine. Naruto and Sasuke leave the leaf village. And they begin training. And Naruto uses a bit more time in initiation to make the point where Harry is about 12. 
he has perfected this weird curse mark ability that Naruto had, I mean, and he ends up giving Harry one. Harry's body goes under metamorphosis, he, gave, he gets an insane strength boost, speed boost. His hair is the main colour, but his eyes go a very dark pitch black. And Sasuke's eyes go a very you, could, you desired. And if you're wondering, guys, this is going to be a short whiff. Oh, I'm so itchy. And Naruto and Sasuke just travelled the world, or travelled the villages, one by one. They even began taking out told beasts. And finally, it happened. What you've all been waiting for. Naruto was sleeping one day, and he just hears, Kid, wake up, we need to talk. He zooms inside his own head uncontrollably like something's dragging him in and he lands in front of a nine-toed fox that was all black and purple and he goes, you're the nine-toed fox? What I read about you was different. Kuruma goes, don't be too surprised, I just woke up myself, I'm not used to this body. And he goes, what? Kuruma goes, I never normally used to look like this, I think whatever contract you made fucked me over as well. And oh my god guys, this video might need to end early, you don't know how itch I am. Naruto and Kurama begin talking. And although they don't have a lot of common grounds, Kurama just apologises to him. All the torture that he went through was because they looked at him as a demon because of Kurama. Naruto said it's fine, if they looked at him as a demon, they must have looked at Kurama a way worse way. Hearing this Kurama smiles, even after all the hatred he's been through, if no one's done anything to him, Naruto isn't just going to be a mug for no reason, is he? And they even begin to get, instead of just ca figuring out what's happening conversation, but becomes friendly. And then they end it with a fist bump and go to bed. When their fists connect, no one realised it yet, but that was a spark. A spark that was the beginning of everything. The spark that sent messages, pulses throughout the universe. And the spark that would begin the end of all things holy and unholy. We now go to Naruto and Sasuke who are sleeping in a tree, I couldn't like two separate trees, and they're talking to each other. And Sasuke goes, Naruto, so what's your plan from here? And Naruto says, honestly Sasuke, I'm gonna wait till I'm about 16 maybe, and I'm fucking up the leaf village. So here in the Sasuke, he frizzes up a bit, because he did have some friends in the leaf village, and he goes, what if you... I mean... Sasuke goes, what if you, Naruto says, no Sasuke, you had the promise, if you come with me, you back me. If you don't want me to destroy the leaf village, you can go back to it and wait for me to come fuck it up. I won't kill you, but you'll get fucked up with it. Hearing this, Sasuke says, I understand why you want it, but we have friends there. Naruto says, no, you have friends there. Sasuke says, what about Hinata, she always had a crush on you. Naruto pauses for a second and says, that doesn't matter now, does it? I'm not exactly the same Naruto she knew back then. Sasuke tries to convince Naruto out of it to the point Naruto starts getting pissed off, his bloodlust boils out and he says no Sasuke, sure you were looked at as a new Chiho you could have destroyed the village, or we all can out and try destroying the village, I was viewed as a demon, I was beaten every day, I was kidnapped for experiments, they literally killed my dog and they tried to kill me, only reason I am alive is because of a disaster like I've said. Here in this, Sasuke freezes up and he says, I know, Naruto actually stand, stands up and he rushes at Sasuke, chucking him off his tree and pins him to the ground. His voice turns demonic and so does his eyes turn their red and black, his fangs appear. And he says, you butt me one more time, the village is getting destroyed and you can have a go down with it or you can come with me. I don't care how much I care about you, how much we're friends. This is my life goal, same way your life goal is just killing Itachi. If I asked you not to kill Itachi, but for some stupid ass reason like memories, are you going to do it? No. And Sasuke hearing this, he got put into his perspective. He's, he's right. If that Naruto asked Sasuke not to kill Itachi, he weren't going to listen. It's not fair for him to ask Naruto not to kill a leaf, it's just because he lacked it. And he says, Naruto, I'm sorry, he says, no. You're not sorry, you just realised you're wrong. If we have to say this one more fucking time, you can go back to Leaf Village where you belong, you dirty little Chiha tramp. Naruto didn't mean a single word of this, he was just really pissed off, but it hurt Sasuke, it cut him deep. And he says, what did you call me? Naruto turns around and he says, oh, I'm sorry I didn't mean it, but 
You're defending the people who made my life a living hell. Right now I'm looking at you and all I'm feeling is fucking hatred. Not directed at you, directed at your message. Here in the Sasuke realises what he was doing. He was literally defending the people who caused his best friend complete living hell for years and years. The people who tried to literally kill his best friend experiment on him. And he says, yeah, Naruto, I'm, I'm sorry. Naruto just sighs and says, it doesn't matter now, let's just get, let's try to get some sleep. Naruto lays down, but not for long. As within an hour, he senses the presence of about a hundred people. He sits up and he tells Naruto and Sasuke to hide. They do. They hide using Naruto's camouflage jutsu, and about a hundred shinobi from all different villages the leaf, the sand, the cloud, the village in the mist. I forgot the other one. Oh, the rock, or oh, the stone village. They all appear. No, I did, not, did I say a hundred? I mean a thousand. And they go, Naruto is a mucky, you're coming with us for those crimes against the leaf village, the mass murder of thousands. Naruto laughs and says, have they told you why they were murdered? The rare Kage steps forward and yet yeah, all the Kage are there. And he goes, Actually, yes, I've been interested in this as no one goes on a rampage for no reason. We got told it was a nine-tailed fox went berserk. But at the same time, that doesn't really justify it. Naruto says, Why don't I show you? The third Akage attempts to stop him, knowing that if the other Hokage see what they did to him, they would not stand by him. They might help, they might stop the leafiness from being destroyed, but they will not stand by the third Okage. He says, no, it's a trick. Naruto stares at the third Okage and all of a sudden his legs snap and he goes, hold him bastard when I'm talking, but you don't talk unless I'm talking to you. See, in this sort of Kage felt a bit of fear. Haruzin was recognized as one of, if not the strongest Hokage right alive at that point. And for him to be defeated like that so easily, Naruto looks all the Hokage in the eye, including Haruzin, and show him all the stuff that he had to go through. He can share his memories, all the experiments conducted on him while he was awake, he had his stomach cut open and ensued, his organs messed about with, all while he was awake. He had his eyes torn out and put back in, all the abuse from the villagers, him watching his dog get killed and him bringing him back to life of course, they let him, they let him know about that. Him getting beaten every single day, his house getting trashed, him getting hanged from trees and just barely let go before he died. And then eventually the day he actually did die. After all the Hokages come out of this vision Sarah, and they all begin to throw up. And they all stare at Haruzan with the most hatred and say, you dirty old bastard. He was a boy, he was the third Hokage, he was the fourth Hokage's son. Hearing this Naruto goes, wait, what? He stares Ruzan in the eyes and he recognises it's the truth and he goes, he begins laughing saying, oh, all this time, I was the third Okage, I was the fourth Okage son and you still treat me like a piece of shit on your shoe. That settles it, you're not leaving this place alive. Naruto rushes out the third Okage just for the right Kage to step in and says, no, stop. And he blasts Naruto back and he says, I understand your hatred. If I was in your position right now, I would go to kill him as well. But he does run the leaf village, we can't have it fall into havoc. And Naruto goes, I have no issues with you other four Hokage, but get him away again and you're going to have a war on your hands. The, th the Hokage lasts into the war, a war with who? Naruto smirks. He clicks his fingers and a bunch of Demonic creatures bring the pier by the thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand, basically a million. And they all stare on the stand in the trees, fly in the sky, on the ground, stand down the cargo. The Rakage's heart drops to his stomach and he go and he only thought to himself is he, he's a one man army. It doesn't matter how much of a good relationship we had with the Leaf Village, we cannot get involved with this. This will be a full blown war for any village. And instead the Rakage puts out his hand and says, If not, I understand all the pain you went through. I understand the hatred. And I just want to say, I had a lot of respect for your father. We fought, again, we fought once in the war and he absolutely beat the shit out of me. I couldn't lay a finger on him. There's always a place for you in this cloud village if you want it. Here in this court Naruto of God, everyone he's ever met in, in gave, him, gave him back hate. But this man, maybe it's out of fear, he still treated him with respect, even when he first met him, 
He was only a bit disrespectful because he was afraid of what he could do. Sorry guys, I'm back. I had to deal with things. Someone in my school rushed on rushed an SEN kid after school, that autistic kid, slapped him about and then chucked him in the bush. I had to deal with that very quickly. But anyway, yeah, after they sorted now. But the Raikage only feared Naruto for what he could do. He didn't hate him, he didn't want to kill him. And Naruto was, wasn't exactly as sort of over the moon about it, but it gave him a bit of, not respect, but he appreciated a bit. So if it came to it, Naruto ain't gonna slice this man down here today unless he starts to fight. But that one's looking at him, he could tell one of them was looking at him with pure fear, hatred and all that. And that was the woman. The one wearing a blue, the, uh, wearing, the one wearing, I forgot her name, the one wearing a blue outfit with brown, with brown hair. So Naruto said to her, if you don't take that glare off me, you're going to lose your eyes. And then she said, how dare you threaten a car gear? And she attacked him with a blast of steam. Naruto just walks through it with, uh, with ease and teleports right in front of her. And says, I warned you, he gouges out both her eyes and cr gouges out both her eyes and crushes them. She screams, the Rakakage says, no, damn it. All the other Kage there begin to attack Naruto. And Naruto just begins laughing, saying, you really think I'm afraid of you? He begins blitzing all the Kage, except for the Rakage. He was sort of getting involved and sort of not. He was more trying to split it up. And as such, he was spared by Naruto at least. After about two minutes, all the Kokage on the ground bruised, battered. And the Rakage begins to activate his light mode saying, I didn't want to do this, but you leave me no choice. Naruto glares at the Rakage saying, make your next choice very, very wisely. One wrong move and I'll slice your head off. Rakage takes a gulp saying, I, I have to do this, I'm sorry. That's when it happens. Naruto gets hit by hunting force. And he gets it flying backwards. He looks up and a man with orange hair and purple eyes saying, Naruto Uzumaki, we need to talk. And he screams, I'm not talking to no one, you pink eyed, you pink eyed bastard. And he lunges at him and whips out his sword. We all know this to be pain and he used to all my push, but Naruto swings his blade and it actually ends up eating the chakra, going right through the white push. And Naruto decks pain hard in the chest and in him flying. And he says, You lot are lucky, I gotta deal with him now. And he disappears. The Rakage falls down to his knees, sweating. The bloodlust that Naruto was putting out was making the Rakage's knees shake. We now go to Naruto, Sasuke and Harry. Who, Sasuke and Harry are still camouflaged, thrown behind Naruto. Naruto lands around the person he just punched and saying, Who are you? What do you want? He says, I I'm Pain from the Akatsuki. We want to recruit you. Your power will be very useful in destroying all the villages and capturing the Tower Beast. Naruto goes, but I'm the nine toys in Cherokee. Pain says, we know, but the reason we want to capture the Tailed Beast isn't very important. We only need a bit of the nine tails chakra. So you could still keep your Tailed Beast. Naruto and Pain says, well, if you end up actually working by our side and not against us, we will help you destroy the Leaf Village. And Naruto just laughs saying, do I look like I need your help to destroy the Leaf Village? And Pain goes, well, it can be very useful to have people to watch your back. And Arthur thinks about it and says, okay, but on one condition, you got to tell me a bit more about them special eyes of yours. Pain thinks about it and says, okay, fair. Naruto then leaves with Pain to go to the Akatsuki base, and he also brings along Sasuke and Harry, and he explains if I'm coming to our day. Pain accepts it, but says there's going to be a slight problem. Itachi is in the Akatsuki. Hearing this, Naruto goes, hmm, okay then. New offer. Naruto and, I mean, Itachi and Sasuke get to 1v1 as well. Pain says, I can't exactly agree to that, but I'll keep the other Akatsuki from jumping in if you do fight. And they leave. And they leave. When Naruto finally gets there, they open the base and they walk in. All the Akatsuki members except for Itachi were there. And that's because Pain sent in a message for Itachi to leave beforehand because he ain't watching that scrap. Itachi thinks, damn it, maybe next time. And anyway, he gets introduced to everyone and they all seem so cocky saying, why is this brat here, blah, blah, blah. 
it was the dairy who first called him a brat and that says did you just call me a fucking brat you blo- you fucking wanna be girl mate i'll drag you by your ponytail and slap you silly so yeah laughing says let's see how you do against my art he chucks in a clear explosion at naruto and Archer just firms it and says well is that really all you got he then summons up his cargo and launches it at the dairy, slapping him across the cave, wrapping him around his leg and picking him up and slamming him back ground. He then gets on top of him and begins punching him until Naruto's hands are bloody. And he stands up saying and spits on him saying, learn your lesson you tramp. The rest of the cats who are watching this are quite impressed. And one by one, one, by one they all learn their lesson as Naruto beat the shit out of all of them, not killing them, but letting them know he's a top dog. That's when Toby appeared. And still acting like his child himself, and Naruto didn't buy it at all and said, Why the fuck are you acting like a little prat? I can sense you're one of the strongest people here. Hearing this, everyone's confused, and Toby just laughs it off, and Naruto can get the message that he's keeping his, his secret hidden. So he just lets it go, saying, Actually, sorry, I got it wrong. I sense in pain, not you. And he gives a look at a beetle, saying, I know, and you know I know. After this, him and Abito go walking to- as Toby gave the excuse, I want to give the new guy a tour. They begin talking. As soon as they got away from everyone, Toby's fa- voice changed back to his deep Abito voice. And he goes, Naruto is a maki. How, could you- how do you know? How did you see through my act? And Naruto goes, ain't that hard. I can sense your chakra charts is off the, your chakra is off the charts. And Abito goes, oh, I guess I need to figure out a way to hide that. And he also says, and also, I could see your eyes a bit different. Whether you want to admit it or not, you got the same eyes as Pain and a Sharingan. A beat is caught with guard saying, I don't have my Sharingan activated. And he says, I could just tell. And he explains, and, he, and Naruto says, well, explain your real motive, because I am buying this Destroy the Leaf Village bullshit. Hearing this, a beat of be laugh saying, you're exactly like the rumours were. Genius. He explains the plan about the Ten Tails, Madara Chiha being alive to destroy the Leaf Village. And Naruto says, cool, just one condition. I'm the one who destroys the Leaf Village and the third Okage gets saved from me. That's what it's done, so. Bito says, <laughs> I don't want to get my hands dirty anyway. And Naruto makes one thing clear to Bito by pinning him against the wall. But he activates his Kamui and Naruto falls through him. And he says, you really think that's going to stop me? Naruto grabs Obito through his Kamui saying, I'm just that guy, pal. I have to, your Kamui don't do shit against me. Obito seeing this, Obito seeing this, realised that Naruto was a huge danger, being able to negate his intangibility. He pinned him against the wall saying, If you plan to betray me, shall I take my what nine tells or attempt to kill me? I will drip you limb from limb. And when Madara Chiha comes, I don't care what sort of legendary shinobi he is, I'll make him a bitch. He begins choking Obito to make the point across and he drops him but say, and he says, But until then, you have my full trust. His eyes begin glowing red. Don't fuck it up. He disappears in the flash. Obito's holding onto his throat and he gives me Madara vibes. Ugh, these next few years ain't gonna be fun. We begin this what if, or this part of the what if, shall I say. We have a two year time skip. Naruto right now is roughly... No, I'd say he is 15. And Harry is roughly about 11. And Sasuke is the same age as Naruto. And this starts with Naruto attempting to do what him and Kurama have been waiting for. After countless, countless years of training, which is something Kurama didn't expect. With Kurama's actual embodiment himself being changed into this actual demon Ninetales, the process of him lending Naruto power also changed. Neither of their bodies were assimilated to it, none of them had a good link. So the past two years they have just been training relentlessly. They could access a one Tails cloak, if you're, if you're wondering. The one Tails cloak was a purpley red, not just full red. Actually, the one Tails cloak was purple. No one told his cloak was powerful, I'd say. And this continued happening until they got up to the literally eighth tell. And finally, through their final link, they entered KCM1. But this was weird, this wasn't like the usual. Naruto's chakra, like his skin changed to more of a purpley black colour, and his physical features also changed. He gained more demonic features, his eyes literally dilated his 
He felt his muscles expand, shrink, expand, shrink. He felt his bones change. And most importantly, on his back, a wing shot out. But these were attractable, of course. Naruto, in this form, felt connected with the world. And also connected with not people's emotions, people's fears. And with this, Naruto was just a different breed. As, yes, one of Naruto's most favourite things in the world to do was using his overpowered genjutsu in a way, was make people see whatever the hell he wanted. And if Naruto knew their biggest fears, he could play on that. He's becoming the real devil. Not only this, Naruto's speed, his strength, every little ability he has got a boost. And Naruto, over the last few years, wasn't just training with Kurama, he unlocked more abilities. These abilities included, Naruto was able to freely manipulate matter, creating a sword at will, creating water, fire, anything like that with a hand signs from his hands. Not only this, Naruto could control this weird type of energy, he had no clue where it was, but one thing he did know, it was very dark. And this energy existed in all people, and if Naruto tapped into it, Naruto could change the very foundation of what a person was. He unlocked more abilities, but you're going to get to know them more throughout this wave. And finally, the plan came to be. Over the past few years, Naruto has one by one tracked down every single tailed beast. With the, Naruto was there for most of them, but he always wore a mask. Similar to Abito's, except that it had horns on it and it showed both his eyes. The team that he was there, it was always him, Sasuke, and Harry would be at home with the other taxi members, all, all of them teaching him special ways. Naruto knew that this Harry was going to become insanely overpowered. As for some reason, he learned quick, he could gain the abilities of others, and most importantly, he never ever gave up. But yes, throughout the last two years, Naruto had captured every single tailed beast, including the eight tails, extracted them, and made the Jinjurikis his minions. Yes, that's his other ability. Naruto can find dead bodies, and after injecting them with power, they, write, they, re, they will be reborn as de demons. And these demons had any sort of power that Naruto wanted them to, but it also linked with their original self. The most annoying one that he captured was the Eight Tails, as this demon would just not stop rapping. But whatever his, 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 he rapped became, an, became a reality. And the One Tails, I'm only going to give you I'm only going to give you these two. His main power was derived from how pe much people were afraid. The more scared they were, the power more powerful he became. But finally, his day that he dreamed of came, the attack on the leaf village. And as such, they all, le they all left out in groups and they finally arrived at the right time. Naruto walks through the gates with with without his cloak on and he gets stopped by the two leaf guards. Identify yourself. This is a leaf village, if you're not going to let any random person stroll in, you must be mistaken. Naruto takes off his mask and smiles at them. Their heart drops, that's, that's the demon fox, the one who's run on a rampage in a village before. Naruto just begins laughing and before they can sound an alarm, he slices both their head off. Naruto begins walking through the village until his eyes, f his eyes get the pupils, it becomes slanted like when he enters Kyubi mode. But the slant becomes purple, his eyes still red, and he roars, roars loud. The village, villagers get scared, and when they see him, they think, no, the nine tails fox is back. And he begins laughing, he activates his kagane, and begins sprinting around the village, killing hundreds of people. And as the ambu appear, he begins laughing and points up to the sky, saying, you're targeting the wrong person. Pain is in this sky, saying, this world shall know pain, almighty push. Naruto wraps himself in his Kagane, the real perfect defense, and it hardens. <laughs> Sorry, guys. And his Kagane hardens, protecting him from this blast. The entire leaf footage gets destroyed. Unlike Kano, when Naruto was someone he rushed in to help everyone, it was Sasuke, Hinata, Neji, Kiba, all them lot, they all rushed in. 
and he was just laughing. Hinata goes, Naruto, pl please come back. And he just laughs saying, Hinata, I'll spare you. He looks her in the eyes and she falls into a powerful genjutsu, knocking her out. Hinata, Sakura rushes him saying, where's my brother? And she throws a powerful punch at Naruto. Naruto blocks it with his Kagane and blows him back. And blows her back, I mean. Neji activates his Byakugan just for Naruto to appear in front of him and says, Yoink! And snatches his eyes. Neji screams, he's now blind. And Naruto looks at his Byakugan and says, Hmm. And he eats it. Naruto feels his vision change. He can see people's chakra constantly. It's not like the Byakugan black and white, but he can see people's chakra flow when he wants to. And he smirks and kins. Interesting. He sprints around the village, finding all the other villagers who haven't been killed yet. And begins ending them one by one. All the villagers who wronged him painfully. Some he would take off a limb and leave them for later. And the others, who didn't really cause him, uh, who didn't do a lot of bad stuff to him, he ended their life quickly, painlessly. But then there was those who hunted down every day, beat him. They were put into a genjutsu living out their worst fear fears times by a million. Naruto flew up into the sky next to Pain just laughing saying So Pain, what do you think of our little conquest of the leaf? Is it what you really dreamed of? Pain laughs and says, What I dreamed of, wasn't this your number one dream? Naruto says, This weren't my dream. My dream was making everyone who wronged me in my past live a living hell. And there's still others who haven't really Got to experience my dream, let's say. Pain goes, well, there's always tomorrow. And they begin laughing. Naruto can sense Abito's chakra. And he says, I wonder what that bastard's doing. And he disappears in a flash. He senses Sasuke. And he, as he planned, Sasuke's found, found Itachi by now. And he says, interesting, that fight's going to be a bit of entertainment. <sighs> oh, I'm so tired guys, I'm so sorry, COVID has fucked me up, literally, I slept all day, I woke up at 5 o'clock today guys, it is 8 o'clock, I mean at night, and I'm still tired, and he intercepts a beater who's travelling to some um, off place, and he appears next to him saying, where are you going, well, beater says, leave Naruto, this doesn't involve you, Naruto says, who the fuck do you think you're talking to? And he roundhouse a beater in his face. This is what a beater's life's been for the last few years. He will give lip to Naruto and Naruto will beat on him. Naruto says, have I not made this clear? I don't care about your plan to resurrect Maduro Chiha. I told you I would walk in him with open arms. But one thing is, you're not keeping shit from me. So either answer the question or end your plan here. Abito scowls and says, fine, I hate you. I'm going to go meet someone named Kabuto. He works with Orochimaru, you see, and... What? Oh, oh, i got to sneeze. Achoo! <laughs> and he believes that he's managed to resurrect, or find Maduro Uchiha's body, which is something that even I haven't been able to do properly. Naruto laughs to say, so your plan to resurrect Madara is coming quicker than you imagined. Thank fuck, I was getting bored. He says, tell me where and I'll go meet him. Because I can move a lot faster than you. And then you can just sense my tracker and Kamui to me. Abita says, fine. He gives Naruto the location and in a flash, Naruto appears in front of Kabuto with his mask on. Kabuto goes into his defense, Kabuto goes into his defense saying, who are you? And he sees Naruto's cloak saying, so you must be a friend of the masked man. Naruto says, yes. You see, I could sense your chakra straight. I, I mean, I can move a lot faster than he can. And he can sense my chakra so he can get here a lot sooner now. As he says this, Abito appears out of his Kamui next to Naruto saying, and says, I guess you are useful when it when I actually need it. Despite what you'd think, Naruto and Abito have sort of developed a friendly relationship, let's say. Both hate in a leaf village. And Kabuto says, finally, you're here. Let me show you my masterpiece. He does the hand signs. And all the people before, except for Itachi and except for Itachi and Nagato are summoned. <laughs> he 
Except for Itachi and Nagato are summoned. And if you're wondering about Nagato, don't worry about that one. You're gonna find out in a little bit. Trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me. But then finally, the last coffin opens and it's Maira Uchiha. A beat of seeing this feels fear. He says, oh, finally, it's, it's gonna happen. I'm gonna see Ren again. Now, after hearing this, he says, oh, you're Ren. I told you I can bring her back to life. I mean, he says, no, I've seen what bring your, you bring people back to life does. It turns them into demons. And Naruto says, beggars can't be choosers. You're the one always bitching about the person who didn't even like her because she chose Kakashi. Maybe if she weren't a hoe, she wouldn't have died. Hearing this, Abita snaps and he says, how dare you? He swings at Naruto and Naruto just snapped his arm. And he looks at all the people who were there. And he says, interesting. I'll leave your mother Uchiha for yourself. For, the, for you, Abito. But the rest are mine. Naruto clicks his fingers and all the others who were summoned there begin to change. Naruto injects energy into them and they all become his demon. Kabuto screams, no, how dare you? They were my pawns. My bucket plan for when, you betr- for when I want to go against you. <gasps> so, hearing this, Kabuto realizes, damn it, I messed up. Naruto with the biggest smile on his face says, go against me, eh? I shall end your life here. He appears in front of Kabuto and Punches his head off, but Kabito has gone into snake sage mode at this point, and he absorbs it, he regenerates his head. Naruto just begins beating on him. L- right punch, left punch, up, down and left. Everybody knows I'll kill you in your chest. That's what Naruto's singing, but you know what I mean, a better version of it. And Kabuto's in fear now as he's running out of sage energy, or nature energy shall we say. And his regeneration ain't gonna last long. He tries to get away, but Naruto locks him in his black chakra chains and says, I'm getting bored of this. Fuck off. Go tell hello, go say hello to your dead family. And he absorbs Kabuto's soul. This gives Naruto a power to snake sage mode, and he's like, huh. It's alright, I guess. And he enters it, and he's like, actually, it's pretty exquisite. Are you guys wondering why this what if has no ground, no f- formula, no foundation, no plan? It's because I'm forgetting these ideas as I say them. And my head is just hurting so much. <sighs> but yes, yeah, now I turn to Snake's Edge mode. And he says, this is actually exquisite. The power coursing through my veins has an outside source. But I manipulated it to create a new energy. Now to enter Demon Sage mode. And he says, interesting, but we'll keep that for later. My main plan is you. He says, I fucked up a little bit. I ended up killing him before you can complete the Edo Tensei. Wait, no. Actually. No. The real animation juice is Edo Tensei, right? Yeah, it is. Wait. Yeah. Edo Ten. I think it is, anyway. And Abita says, you what? You just ruined the whole plan. You know you know you want to sent it. Blah, blah, blah. And Abito, Naruto says, Abito, my friend, calm down. Your finger got to order this. I couldn't have resurrected him on my own. Abito says, you could have what? Naruto says, yeah, I knew what his body was the whole time. I can sense everything, mate. We've been through this. But since you didn't want me to make work win, I didn't even have my ability, huh? Not to mention I could have made him like 10 times stronger than he already was. But since you don't want that, I guess give him sentience. Naruto searches throughout the underworld, let's say, and finds Mother of Soul. He extracts it, and he slams it into this Edo Tensei. Mother w- opens his eyes, and his eyes are gone. He says, I, I cannot see. Obito, this isn't the plan. Mad- Naruto says, shut up, you whiny bastard. Be lucky I even resurrected ya. And he gives Mother, he generates eyes inside Mother's head. Mother goes, so you must be Naruto, who's a market I've heard of. You're quite mouthy. Let me put you in your place. Naruto flashed it. I mean, Madara flashed it right behind Naruto and just to slump him around the head. Naruto just lets him hit him, but doesn't move. And he swung his head through like 180 degrees, saying, You're fucked up, Nada bastard. He opens his mouth and a massive beam of chakra shoots out of it, destroying half of Madara's body. And he gets in Madara's face, pinning him down, saying, Let me make this very, 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 very clear. I'm stronger than you will ever be. The reason you're alive right now is me and I can easily extract your soul and end your plan right now. 
So stop bitching about me being mouthy because I'm the top dog and don't go Hashirama! Because Hashirama's a bitch in front of me. Marja feels a feeling in his chest he has never felt in his life since he was a child. Fear. This is a common utterance when you face against Naruto Uzumaki. The demon. And he says, uh, what, uh, it, 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 uh, Impossible. No one should ever be able to rival our strength. This generation was meant to be weak. Naruto slaps him and says, This generation is not me, mate. I'm a go- No, I'm a devil. Madra doesn't like the variable of Naruto being stronger than him. But what can he do? Naruto can take his life away immediately unless they do a little bit of a Renigan. But eventually it doesn't matter. You know why? Because Madala has a plan. And they begin sprinting towards the leaf village. They do the hand signs to summon the ghetto statue and Naruto feeds it literally a little drop on the nine tails and it is summoned. Weaker than canon because remember in canon it got a bit more than nine tails than it had. And Mother are not wasting time at all, already being informed that a bunch of these shinobis are already dead. He is straight away he's exhausted the nine the uh, ten tails. And becomes the tin tier of ginger licky. And as such Madara becomes powerful here, yeah, awakens his Renegon, he gains his real body and he swings back around tempting to challenge Naruto again. Naruto headbutts him and he puts his hand in his stomach, slowly he begins to strap in the tentail saying you're keeping this for your last chance, you've got two strikes, don't get a third because you're fucked if you do. I can extract this tentail from you at any time and I will. So let's just go. And we now go to Naruto who's floating above the Shinobi Alliance, well, what is left of the Shinobi Alliance. As after the... after the Tentos attacked, all the other villagers manage to gather their forces and arrive at the battlefield. And now you're wondering, what do you mean? Why would they hide together? They had no reason to. One, shut up, my what if not yours? And two, they will recognise the threat if that Tentos doesn't get destroyed now, it's the end of the shinobi world as they know it. And they all also recognise the fact if they don't work together, that ten tolls beast is gonna fuck them all up. But we now go to there. The Raikage is standing next to Tsunade. And Tsunade stares Naruto in the eye and says, Wait, I mean a third of Kage. I'm sorry guys! I forgot about her. Tsunade is there, but she isn't the fifth of Kage. She's in the plans to become the fifth. Actually, she is the fifth Hokage. What am I saying? But the third Hokage is still alive. He is a very active threat, if you get me. But the third Hokage is just staring Naruto in the eye. And Naruto begins laughing. He flies down at insane speed as his arm changes into a more demonic figure. Into a more demonic substance. And he decks the third Hokage, sending him flying. He then enhances his voice like so it's bare loud and he goes To the shinobi world I thank you for all the mistreatment you gave me All the torture, all the pain throughout the years As it's made me who I am today And without further, further, without further ado you always told me I'm the devil, I'm the demon Well welcome to Hell on earth after saying this, <laughs> all the shinobi that, well half of the shinobi there, begin to break down in fear as Naruto is pouring out his bloodlust onto them. And with the biggest smile in his face, with the ten toes charging them behind him, Naruto activates his Kagane as the nine toes shoot up from every direction. It begins impaling hundreds if not thousands of the shinobi alliance, and he hasn't lost eye contact with the third Okage once. He retracts his Kagane and he, well it's not fully retracted, it's still out and it points towards the third Okage. He sends it flying towards him and the third Okage dodges, but with it now embedded in the ground, Naruto yanks himself towards the third Okage. He activates his KCM2, entering a purplish form, more devilish features and his wings pop out of his back. The third Okage seeing this form is disgusted, saying you truly are a de- 
Free human get the word out. Naruto has absolutely disemboweled this old bastard. I mean, he's sent his hand through his stomach and he jumps backwards. The third Hokage appears next to the third. I mean, the fifth Hokage. We're fix up. Ow! Oh! <laughs> the fifth Hokage appears next to them and he heals the third Hokage. She enters her car. Byaki go seal. I swear, wait. Byaki go seal? No, that's something else. Her uh, Byaki go. I think that's what it's called, seal. And she gets ready to fight. She rushes at Naruto and throws a punch. Naruto, quite interested in her strength, throws another one back. Nowhere near full strength, though. He gets blown away and he has a massive smile on his face. He catches himself flying with his wings and says, Just have I heard to, Nade, you truly are incredible. And for those who are wondering, can't Naruto flow without his wings? Yes, but for the sake of plot, Naruto can fly a lot more agile or quicker with his wings out. And Naruto clicks his fingers. The ground beneath him begins to shake as millions of demons rise up from the ground. Some fall from the sky, and he and he yells the Shinobi Alliance. This is where the war really begins. The demons, or the yeah, the demons begin to shoot out of the ground and end up fighting up with Shinobi. Some demons get killed, but the rest get absolutely demolished, man. I'm in the demolished. I'm in the demolished like it's polished. And Naruto says, you really think that you're doing anything fighting against these demons? And some of the shinobi were going, wow, we got this. We're actually killing some of them. Maybe this isn't impossible. Naruto clicks his fingers and nine pentagrams, no, no, nine, eight pentagrams appear on the floor. Actually, one, two, <laughs> eleven pentagrams appear on the ground. Like, one, two, three. Oh my God, twelve pentagrams appear on the ground. And... A full for Kage. Dun 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 dun. First Akage. Dun 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 dun. The second Akage. Dun 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 dun. All appear in a devilish change. As well as all the eight other tailed beasts who had been captured by the Akatsuki. Captured by them and stripped of their tailed beast. And I know I teased you a little bit on what the first one was going to be. That one was Gara. The fir the demon of first rank. By the way, the later the the, the more ranks actually no, I can't be bothered. His his demonic ability is the more people are afraid of him, the stronger he becomes. And the first Hokage Hashirama. His ability is the more the people that he tried loving, like the more he has love towards someone the stronger he gets, but the thing is, no matter how much he loves them, he can't control himself, so the Hashirama still has a sentience, he recognises this as his village, but Naruto's controlling him, so he's doing the most, he's doing the most, like he's, he's, he's gangbanging bitches, and Torbilama, Torbilama, his ability is that, I don't know, what should his ability be, the more he hates someone, the stronger he gets, but Naruto shows influence in him, making him have pure hatred, like, it's a different type of hatred, like, it's a different breed. I can't be bothered about the other bastards, so you're just gonna have to wait and see. Naruto, who is now watching this happen, he begins to fly up through the clouds, and he's me meditating. Kurama says to him, it is time, Naruto, time to do what we do best. Time to fuck shit up. Naruto smirks. He does the hand signs and he summons Sasuke and Harry. You're wondering, this is not like he made them their summoning. He just, he put a flying Raja mark on them. And he, he did the opposite of it and he made them come to him. They all appear there. Naruto looks at Harry and says, Harry, it's your time. He places his finger on Harry's forehead. And a pentagram, similar to how the Sage of the Six Path has a mark on his forehead. This is a pentagram, guys. Same way Sasuke has one in his neck, he has one in his forehead. And he injects Harry with a dark power, similar to Sasuke. And he begins to go into a metamorphosis. Within two minutes, Harry's completed it. He end, he comes out a different type of person. He's hundreds, if not thousands of times stronger. And Naruto him, and him smirk. Sasuke's eyes are different. It is the most internal Magenkyo Sharingan. Because if you understand, because like Sasuke, he fought against Itachi, innit? And he won. 
He awakened him again, Kill Sharangar, and he also implanted the eyes into him, awakening his eternal. So Sasuke begins to activate Susano. And Harry's pentagram mark spreads out throughout his body. His body changes to a devilish, not demonic, devilish form. He gets taller, muscular, muscular. He doesn't get wings, but flames appear in his hand. And they, be, and they get sent flying down. The people who could see this think it's our next coming. Sasuke's massive Susano. And although not as massive, Harry's still bulky guy in his demonic form. When Harry lands first, because he's moving a bit faster, he creates a shockwave or like the ground shock. He caused an earthquake. And Sasuke came in with the ten toes just below him. He activates his Susano around the ten toes, taking control over it. Actually, wait. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Sorry guys, Madara absorbed the ten toes. I forgot. So Sasuke is just flying down in the Susano and he sends a massive slice as millions of shinobi, actually not millions, sorry. As thousands of shinobi scream, some losing limbs, some losing fingers, some losing their chicken dinner. Oh, you know, I'm not going to say that. If you're not British, you're not going to get the chicken dipper. Joke. If you want to get it, look up Ali G, yeah? I don't know, I don't even know why I said it's a British thing, but it's a f if you've watched it, I rate you. If you ain't watched it, go watch it. And Naruto comes falling from the sky with his perfect link with Kurama. He enters the tailed beast link form. Um, insane amount of chakra and also that dark energy Naruto possesses explodes around them. Literally, they could see it creating veins. It seems to be creating a living person. As the chakra creates arms, legs, the nine tails. But it's not like the it's not like what it was in canon. This is demonic, bro. This steam this Naruto is on demon time, like you get me. He comes down and as he's even before he even reached the ground, by the way, this tail beast does have wings. He's already launched a tail beast bomb. A hundred times stronger than we've ever seen. Half the literally half of the battleground is completely destroyed. And he, he sees the rest of them. He sees the Tadakage still alive. And he zooms down towards him. He crushes him with one hand, laughing. The the bottom half of the third Akagi is absolutely destroyed in ASMR, guys. I got a can of Coca-Cola. And if you're wondering why my what if style has changed, I don't know. Literally, you guys comment down below, yeah? I'm getting more comfortable with my what if, so I'm just fucking about. If you guys want me to be more serious and get more of the story done and like less of that chicken de bar, just say it. I really am not bothered because. I'll make I'll, I'll make a different channel where I just chat shit. <laughs> but other than that, guys, yeah, let's get straight back into it. And the third Okage is coughing up. He says, "Naruto, I, I'm sorry. Please spare my people. They did nothing to you." Naruto gets pissed. He picks up the third Okage and brings him towards him. Keep in mind, the third Okage has no legs. And he looks in his eyes. He activates the Genjutsu he showed many before of the torment. The torture, the Ebola that he went through. And he says, I did nothing. Did you really say they did nothing? Your people are monsters. He begins to tear up, his emotions leak out, his chakra takes control. Your people are monsters. They abused me, they, they stabbed me, they killed me. But now that I'm doing the same, you can't accept, accept it, can you? I'll be ready for the hell on earth that you've been predicting, you've been fearing, has come to fruition. Now, watch as your people burn in hell. Naruto raises his hand as the third Okage is absolutely stunned by feeling the torment Naruto did. Red and black flames roar throughout the battlefield, catching all those he lived before. Madara says, no, I needed them for the divine tree. Naruto spits at him and says, fuck off, you pimp. I don't know why I said pimp, guys. And the third Akagi watches as his students, Jiraiya included, Jiraiya was there. I'm joking, Jiraiya is in there. He watches as everyone there burns in flame as he's the last one left standing. <laughs> and, Naruto, and Naruto looks him in the eyes and he says, time for our chicken dinner. And he bites off the third Akagi's head. And he munches that like real good, like proper, like chewing it. Like you hear the crunching of the bones. He's like, 
he's licking his teeth going mm, oh, I could use a little bit of salt a little bit of ketchup oh wait what is that is that grapefruit is that a bit of grapefruit mmm yeah it's fucking lovely mate okay guys one second I need to go gather my thoughts so I can stop chatting shit and after this Narasha takes a deep breath <sighs> finally it's over the torment, the torture, the fear, the pain I've felt throughout all these years, all my life, it's over. I can finally rest in peace. Naruto pulls out his sword from his side and lifts it in the air and he plows it down towards his chest. Harry and Sasuke stop him just in time. Sasuke screams, Naruto, what are you doing? <laughs> How could you be so fucking stupid? Yeah, it's over, so you wanna kill yourself now. We're here for you. How do you think we would feel after that? You really want another fuck you really want another Shinobi World War of no Shinobi. <laughs> Naruto just cries. He says, please, it's over. I don't want anything to do. I got my revenge. I just wanna rest in peace. Murder begins laughing as he flies up into the sky. <laughs> rest in peace yeah I'll make sure you all rest in peace now with the tentacles on him fully sink that's what he's been doing he, he's absorbing it properly he explodes with power and he dives down towards Naruto and throws a right hook Naruto just eats it and he's and <laughs> Madara laughs thinking how so fast you couldn't even react that's when he realizes he fucked up you know how he realizes because he looks at he makes eye contact with Naruto and Naruto is just glaring at him his eyes glowing Naruto attempts to slice him with a tree seeking orb and Naruto just swings his arm and breaks it and lunges his hand forward ripping through Madara's chest and Naruto says I warned you you cunt ten tails mine Naruto absorbs the ten tails becoming it's in jerky well not fully he holds it he looks at Harry and Sasuke and says hmm fuck it and he slams it into harry harry begins screaming in pain and after thinking oh i fucked up oh i fucked up oh i fucked up big time oh no i fucked up i didn't even get it head but harry's body eventually gets used to it and his skin turns a bit more pale and he opens his eyes with the renegon there and after looks at him thinking oh i, I want the renegon he looks at Madara, whose eyes are still in the Renegon form, and he says, "Yoink!" And he implant, he rips them out and implants them in his own eye. Naruto's eyes quickly return back to how they were originally, and he thinks, "Fuck!" But Naruto straight away recognizes he's got the abilities. He goes, "Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. I like it really nice." You know what, guys? I am very, very tired. I apologize for all the random shit I've been doing. I am not trying to shit fuck up this channel. I understand if you guys don't like it, just comment down below. I am going to try to stop doing it, unless you guys like me fucking about a bit. But, <laughs> Naruto smiles. He senses that there was a woman along with that ten toes, but that is not his problem. And he sees Harry becoming insanely powerful. Powerful to enough where he needs to live his own way. He places his hand on him and he reverses his age till he's about 11 and he clicks his finger, a portal opens up and Naruto says this is a different universe, similar to our own but uh, I, didn't, I didn't give up my humanity. In this place I want you to live your own life not in my shadow, forget your hatred for the leaf, learn about them, become friends with them if you wish or if you want to destroy them. You're welcome to. And he places a seal in the back of his Harry's hand. And he says, Once you need my help, pour your chakra into this seal and it will summon me. Harry goes, No, no, wait, please. But now to a roundhouse kicks Harry through the portal, sending him spiraling through universes until he lands in the middle of the forest of death, aged backwards, keeping his power. And he goes, So. I guess it's time to live my life. And his own life he will live. But to see that life, you're gonna have to wait and see if I wanna make that with. Because that is the end of the movie, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. Like I said in the intro, if you did, make sure you like, subscribe, comment down below what else you wanna see. 
And you know what? I'm not going to piss you lot off because I know you don't want to hear. And hit the notification bell. Probably not even 10 of you are going to see this because I know none of you fucking muppets watch the end of the video. Oh, and don't comment. Oh my god. Oh my god. I have gotten so many messages since I started swearing. You can't comment to your viewers like that. You're nothing without us. It's not whatever I'm nothing without you. You're to get no videos if I'm not even there. So fuck off you. I can't say that. I was gonna say the C word, but YouTube really don't like it, so I'm not. Other than that, guys, I hope you do enjoy it, and I'll see you on the next What If. Bye.